stars up above So far away we only see their light Long after the star itself is gone And so it is with people that we loved Their memories keep shining ever brightly Though their time with us is done But the stars that light up the darkest night These are the lights that guide us As we live our days These are the ways we remember We remember as we live our days, these are the ways we remember, we remember. Yesh kokavim sheora magia arza, rak kasher heim atzmam abdul veinab. Yesh anashim sheziv zikram meir Kasher heim atzmam enam od betocheinu Orot ele amavikim Becheshkat alam Shemarim l'adam et haderech, et haderech. Heim heim shemarim l'adam et haderech, et haderech. As we live our days. These are the ways we remember, we remember as we live our days. These are the ways we remember, we remember, we remember. Four times a year, our tradition tells us to unlock a door and walk through. We know that what lies behind that door is a room filled with sadness, anger, pain, and confusion. But it's also a room filled with laughter and beauty and love. But for much of the year, the door remains closed. Sometimes it's because of our busy lives. Other times we just don't want to make the effort. And often it's a need to repress the overwhelming emotions that we know could overpower us. So we leave the door closed. Or maybe we open it just a crack. But on Yisker, we are supposed to throw that door open, walk through, and face all the feelings and memories head on. It's not meant to bury us in a pit of despair or darkness. Instead, it is our opportunity to make sure that we are opening not just a door to the pain, but also a door that leads us back to the lessons, values, and dreams of the people whom we loved so much. We are here to bring life back in. 
Every loss we endure offers us the opportunity to find amidst the grief and loss gratitude for our own life. As Rabbi Lawrence Kushner rightly put, every brush with death is a brush with life. There are two people I know who have lost both of their parents to COVID-19. In each case, their mother and father died within days of each other. And in both cases, the families were not able to be there to say goodbye. They weren't even able to be there at their burials. The virtual Shiva to honor one of these couples was held on Zoom and it became the only avenue by which to mourn, grieve, and share memories. People showed up from around the country. The first time they had seen each other since the deaths and what started with some tears and painful silence slowly transformed into something else. From their screens through anecdotes and stories complete with laughter and jokes, it became something along the lines of a gift exchange, an opportunity for everyone to share the gems and lessons that they had received from this couple. One person spoke about the love this couple had for one another and how that inspired him to fix his own faltering marriage. The way they showed their love, whispering sweet nothings, the way that she gave him a peck on the cheek each time he walked in the door and how they lovingly raised their kids. Another person talked about how the man had been his mentor through his career, and now as a mentor himself, he uses the same metaphors, offers the same advice, and counsels young employees in the same tone of voice and mannerisms as his teacher. One of the couple's sons remembered the horse races he used to go to when he was a kid, how his father taught him how to bet, and that there was no fonder memory he had than of that time he spent with his pop. This family's experience with death allowed them to slowly open a door to honor and celebrate life, and not just the lives of this beautiful couple, but even more so the lives of those who carry on without them. We each experience loss differently. The death of my own grandmothers has helped me to live my life more fully and to focus more diligently on the beauty in the world. I remember flying up to the Bay Area to sit in the hospital room with my grandmother, Patricia, just hours before she died. She wasn't conscious, but I sat there for a long time, sometimes just holding her hand, other times telling her about her great granddaughters and their accomplishments sharing stories with her about my own personal and professional adventures. I called her Tutu. She used to tell me all kinds of jokes, many of them inappropriate, always in a whisper. And it was as if, as if each one was a secret only to be shared between us. She taught me that one can withstand trauma and loss and still find laughter. She encouraged me to pursue whatever brought me joy and fulfillment. And in her honor, I have shared that same encouragement with others. She loved C's candy and always had some ready for our visits, including special C's lollipops for my girls. And my love of chocolate and my loyalty to C's candy is definitely inspired by her. She will always be with me, even though she's not. And years before, I sat at the bedside of my other grandmother, Katinka, whom I called Mimi. She was supportive of my father, who converted to Judaism as a young man. And as a good Christian woman, she gave tzedakah to the local performing arts center in Davis, California, and was thrilled beyond belief when I told her shortly before she died that I was going to become a rabbi. Mimi taught me invaluable lessons that have deep deeply influenced my own parenting and my work as a rabbi. She taught me that there is a unifying force that can be found amongst all people of faith, regardless of religion, and that building bridges between religious groups 
is powerfully important. Her ability to honor each person's unique gifts has led me to treat each of my three daughters as precious jewels with their own luminescence. I learned that a diverse family dynamic can actually breed acceptance and tolerance and that art in all forms must be supported and fostered in communities big and small. I'm thinking of my grandmothers today in these sacred moments of Yisker. Who are you thinking of today? Your mother? Your father? A child? A grandparent? A sister? A brother? A friend? This time that our tradition offers us is a gift. A gift of reflection. A gift that enables our loved ones to influence our lives in memory as they did in life. Whose memory are you honoring through the choices you make in your life? What lessons did they impart and which of those lessons are you living by example? This is the moment we remember them as we allow them to lift us from our sorrow and remember how it felt when we made them proud, when we brought a smile to their face, when we felt embraced and accepted. Let those beautiful memories in. Enjoy them. Be with them. And let this Yiskra moment also be a time we consider the ways that we have fallen short, missed the mark, failed to live up to their ideals and values and lessons that our loved ones who are gone taught us during their lives. If we feel some guilt or disappointment with ourselves, this is our opportunity to recommit, to double down on the teachings of our loved ones, to rediscover the strength that can be gained from living out the dreams and hopes of someone who brought us life and love and friendship. This is our opportunity to embrace more fully and with great love the legacies and gifts bestowed upon us. There's a rabbinic midrash about the story of Job, a man who experienced an unfathomable amount of loss in his life. It states that when Job complained about his misfortunes, God showed him a three-walled sukkah. In the depths of despair and sadness, what was Job supposed to learn from this image? There's no doubt that a sukkah with three walls is less sturdy and more vulnerable to the winds and storms that can rage around it. It's missing a fundamental piece of its architecture but a three-walled sukkah still stands. When an elemental piece of our life is removed, the pain is great and the sorrow is long-lasting, but as the rabbis teach, we remain standing. During Yisker and always, let us stand by our loved ones who are gone and let them continue to stand by us. Let them continue to transform and enhance and enrich our lives. We miss them terribly, but we honor them in the ways that we make decisions, in the way we raise our families, the ways we love and care. At the center of my relationships with both of my grandmothers was a profound sense of joy and optimism. They enveloped me with a vision of bright, wholesome, laughter-filled worlds, and I hold on desperately to that vision as I navigate through our world today. I see their smiles. I feel their hugs. I taste that sea's candy. And I want to create a world for myself and my family that uses all of their love and hope and joy and wisdom 
to strengthen the three remaining walls of my sukkah. They will always be with me, even though they are not with me. Four times a year, we open a door and we walk through. Not just a crack, but all the way. And when we enter that room of memory, may it empower us with the lessons, legacies, and love given to us by our loved ones who are gone and yet so very present. May their memories always be a blessing. What is memory? It is the God-given gift of being able to behold the golden days of the sunset which went before while standing in the ensuing gloom. It is the ability to hear the sweet melody long after the instruments have stopped playing. What is memory? It is experiencing today the heartache of yesterday. It is the sorrow in the present for an agony of the past. It is a conversation with someone who can no longer speak and the sight of a smile on a face no longer here. 
What is memory? It is all that is left to us from the burnt out hopes and strivings as well as the pain and sorrow of the past. What is memory? It is that in which above all else is to be found the source of our immortality. We're going to take a moment for each of us to have our own silent Yisker meditations as we call to mind those whom we have loved and lost. <laughs> We all rise now as one community for Ail Male Rachamim, our memorial prayer. Ail Male Rachamim, Shochein Bamromim, Amitse Menuchane Kona. Thank <laughs> At Nishmo
min Jag styrer Säter knaffar Jag la min Jag tror Ach Nishmatom Adonai Unachalatom Veyanuchu Bishalom An Mishkavam Venomar Amen. O God, eternal spirit of the universe, grant perfect rest unto the souls of our beloved dead. Lord of mercy, may their spirits be bound up in the bond of eternal life. Be their possession and may their repose be peace. And let us say, Amen. We begin by calling to mind the past rabbis of Wilshire Boulevard Temple. Rabbi Abraham W. Edelman, Rabbi Sigmund Hecht, Rabbi Maxwell H. Dubin, Rabbi Edgar F. Magnin, Rabbi Henry Front, Rabbi Mark Goodman, Rabbi Alfred Wolf, and Rabbi Harvey J. Fields. We add to their names the names of those past presidents and honorary board members of the temple. Wolf Kalisher, I. W. Hellman, Harris Newmark, Herman Hellman, Casper Cohen, D. W. Edelman, George Musbacher, Harry Holzer, S. Tilden Norton, George Pyness, Anison Dreisen, Edward Lee Cosberg, Ralph Bookman, J. Robert Arkish, Sidney M. Ermis, Felix Judah, George Epstein, Robert Spencer, Raymond Gerson, Raymond Kurtzman, Eugene Bud Goodwin, Beverly Mitchell, Marion Smoot, Yvonne Gottlieb, and Lionel Bell. We think now of all those who have died since we gathered for Yisker together last year. Lila Aftergood, Barbara Alpert, Arlen Andelson, Les Bateman, Louis Bauman, Marilyn Blank, Nancy Block, Ellen Cohen, Raphael Cohen, Miriam Connor, Margot Daniel, Zena Davis, Sue Dorf, Marilyn Ehrman, Samuel Engelman, Cynthia Appel, Mary Jane Fate, Marty Feldman, Melvin Fischler, Jerry Fishman, David Foster, Sylvia Fox, Arthur Frankel, Marvin Gantz, Nejitola Gossian, Rochelle Ginsburg, the Honorable Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Cantor Maurice Glick, Leonard Goldberg, Paul Goldberg, Edward Goldfeder, Fred Goldman, Julie Goldsmith, Jerry Gottlieb, Bernard Gottlieb, Jack Green, Ruth Green, Howard Greller, Martin Grover, Samuel Halper, Andy Harris, Sherry Helfont Malone, Janet Hull Tenser, Sandra Moss Hyman, Beverly Jacobs, Sion Javahiri, Ethel Kane, Orna Kaplan, Lawrence Cartagainer, Ruth Katz, Mayor Ben Nathan Kakshuri, Thomas Klein, Dolph Kornblum, Lillian Coslow, Marsha Kramer Keller, Solomon Kugler, Ronald Leaf, Leslie Leventhal, Bob Levy, Ava Liadowicz, Elaine Lieberman, William Sandy Lockheim, Evan Mackey, Judd McGilnick, Patricia Malamud, Saul Marenberg, Robert Markowitz, Aurelia Martinez Tapia, Diana Menzer, Louis Merzian, Marshall Mintz, Charlotte Modell, Manny Morchi, 
Myron Morris, Sandra Moss Hyman, Jerome Muchin, Joyce Mullery Clark, Seymour Nadelman, Sarah Nazarian Akrazad, Jerry Newberg, Fran Newberg, Hetty Orden, Dorothy Osman, Jenny Pachelski, Cynthia Perlman, Flora Peckar, Andrea Lynn Pennington, William Phillips, Margaret Peggy Phillips, Aaron Pollock, Thomas Pollock, Ari Ravid, Edward Maurice Regal, John Ressler, Diane Ring, Rabbi Stanley Robin, Jeffrey Rosen, Alex Rosenberg, Betty Rosenberg, Barbara Rosenfeld, Arnold Rosenzweig, Ron Roth, Eric Rothenberg, Betty Rudolph, Greta Salat Panish, Vera Solomons, Ruth Shapira, Jacqueline Rose Schiff, Ruth Schiffer, Frank Schiller, Shirley Schwartz, Diane Schwartz, Mark Schwartz, Larry Schwimmer, Kent Sherman, Nelson Schrager, Rabbi Harry Silverstein, Raymond Spiro, Joe Stabler, Sandra Stein, Natalie Stein, Irene Stein, Charlie Steinick, James Stern, Joanne Travis, William Bill Troy, Jerry Turtle, David Wolf, Leah Wurzel, Rita Yates, Ron Ziff, Stanley Zimmerman, Joel Zucker. We join together now in the words of the Mourner's Kaddish. Yitgadal v'yitkadash shemei rabba ve'alma divrach hirutei ve'amlich malchutei v'chayechon v'yomechon v'chayei d'chol beit Yisrael v'agala v'izman kari v'imru amen. Yehei shemei rabba mevarach le'alam u'lalmei almaya yitbarach v'yishtabach it paar vit romam vit nase, vit adar vit ale vit alal shame de kudsha berichu, le ela ule ela min kol birchata veshirata, tush pechata venechem ata, the amiran ve alma ve imru, amen. Yehesh lama rabba min shemaya, ve chayim alenu ve al kol Yisrael ve imru, amen. O se shalom vim romav, huya se shalom, alenu ve al kol Yisrael. Be'imru. Amen. In this moment, as we begin the Ne'ilah service, setting of the sun, the closing of the gates, our last chance to pray. Pray for our being inscribed in the Book of Life. And again, 
The special melodies of Nila are very simple and short. The opening sounds just two pitches repeated a few times as if we we're moaning. We are tired, we're exhausted. Baruch Ata Adonai. Just those few pitches, and it is Ni'ila. And all that this moment in time means to us and have meant to our people for centuries. Let's begin Ni'ila in that very beautiful way. We rise now in this moment for the Amidah and those two beautiful, meaningful notes. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu, Velohe Aboteinu, Vehimoteinu, Elohe Abraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Velohe Yaakov, Elohe Sarah, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Leia, Velohe Rachel. Hagibor Hanora El Elion Gomel Hasadim Tovim Vekonea Kor Vizoker Haste Avot Veimahot Umevi Gerula The day is fading, the sun is setting. We turn to you, O oh God. Be our guiding star on our homeward journey. In this twilight hour, we pray for the people of Israel. May our people everywhere remain loyal to your covenant to be a light unto the nations. Preserve us in the new year that we might open the gates to such a time. You alone know when such reconciliation will be fulfilled, yet allow us no rest until we push the gates of salvation and peace wide open for all humanity.
as the gates close in this descending hour of the day, we proclaim your grandeur, O fountain of life. As the gates close in this descending hour of the day, forgive us, pardon us, help us, renew us. And now, at the close of this Yom Kippur, we pray that the new year upon which we have entered will be for us, for Israel, and for humanity. A year of blessing and prosperity. A year of reconciliation and love. A year of justice and generosity. A year of spiritual well-being and peace. At the closing of the gates, May God bless our going out and coming in from this time forth and forever. Tekia Gidolaf! We conclude our sacred time together as a community with the ritual of Havdalah. Please join along at home.